And welcome back to SLU. Poor weather, but we've still got some great images and information to share with you tonight. Now, if you're watching uh, on the homepage, you'll see uh, from the all sky camera view that the domes are stuck in the clouds tonight. So uh, you'll be able to see that. Uh, and the reason why we're, we haven't got the live telescope views, but you know, tonight's show. Multiply like uh, what were they called the mogwai you know when they're in that uh, gremlins film you know one drop of water on them and they start multiplying like crazy anyway this particular conspiracy it all started when the nasa hubble team released an, this image of uh, comet ison at the end of april and as you can see it's an absolutely stunning image as all of the Hubble's images are. Now, when they released it, they presented it very clearly as an aesthetically pleasing rather than a scientific image. And specifically, they said they wanted to bring out the faint background galaxies and put the comet against that. But then it all started to go horribly wrong. Now, there's a website that's uh, called the Hubble Legacy archive and anyone can go there you can go there and you can view all of hubble's raw image data and that's precisely what a few people did but unfortunately they had absolutely no idea how astronomical images are usually processed and they didn't seem to want to spend the time to actually find out now most astronomical images are acquired and processed in roughly the same way, whether it's Hubble Space Telescope or the images from the, the SLU space camera that members watch every night. Now, this is what people saw when they looked at one of the Hubble Comet ISON images on that Hubble Legacy archive. And when they use the viewer, there's a, there's a great viewer that you, you can used to look at all these images. When they changed the contrast and zoomed in on this image, they were alarmed to see that what, uh, what they're expecting to see was uh, a comet, but they actually saw multiple objects kind of cloaked under the comet's coma. The coma is that kind of shroud of dust and, and gas that surround a comet's nucleus. Now, within days, videos started to appear on YouTube about government conspiracies, NASA cover-ups, posts appeared on conspiracy blogs and websites, all the usual talk, you know, about alien spacecraft, you know, that supposed planet Nibiru and all sorts of fanciful ideas came forward. By the way, can you remember last year, did we ever hear any apologies from all of those doom mongers? Um, you know, those, those guys. problem. These guys come up with these so-called theories. They dress them up in this scientific language. But then when these ridiculous prophecies don't come true, they simply move on to the next one and no one holds them accountable. But anyway, let's get back to the explanation about this image. Now, all the images I'm going to show you now are the original Hubble data, five of them to be precise. Now, as we step through each image, you can see the background stars and also Comet Ison. But Comet Ison looks like a short straight line surrounded by a smudgy patch. And this brings us to the really the most important aspect of all of this. Comets and asteroids and even the
keeps the image of the object nice and sharp. By the way, look at this um, sum of all five images. The, uh, the conspiracy uh, guys apparently got it wrong, I think. If we zoom in on this image, we can see what appears to actually be five objects, not the three that they said. So, no doubt, a screenshot of this show will be posted on the blogs tomorrow. Anyway, if you've watched Slew's huge number of near-Earth asteroid live shows, you'll remember that the images usually show the asteroid as a short line against pinpoint background stars. Or we see the asteroid as a single point of light and the background stars are trailed, like this time-lapse is showing you. Now, if we go back to those five images, we uh, can see it a little bit better if we if we zoom in actually on the comet's position so anyway look how was hubble's beautiful image taken and processed well the hubble team took the five images tracking the stars with different filters now that ensured that the stars and the background galaxies looked perfect and sharp but comet was moving during the exposures. By the way, the exposures were different durations and that's why the lines that we're seeing are slightly different lengths. The apparent change in direction of the comet but with comet ice on, looking as if uh, it was just a large smudge with some trailed lines. So what they did, just like people do in Photoshop all the time, they removed uh, that from the, the combined images and then they replaced it with an image of ice on from one of the single frames. So they reduced the overlapping smudges and trails with a single instance of the comet to generate that image. Now, I would ask one question of these conspiracy theorists. It's a question I haven't actually seen asked or answered because what we've all done is we've jumped in to give an explanation of how astronomical images are acquired and processed, but we've kind of forgotten this fundamental question. And the question is, if NASA and governments were trying to cover something up, why did they publish the raw data and images on the Hubble Legacy website showing the very objects you're saying they're covering up? Come on, guys, get real. Anyway, I have one last image to share with you on tonight. Sometimes it's really easy to see something, see pretty peculiar sights in astro images, often imaging artifacts and stuff like that. Now, take a look at this image taken by SLU member Richard LaPlante last week. Does it remind you of anything? Well, human brains like to spot patterns, and sometimes we see what we want to see. And I understand uh, that a certain Mr. Vader uh, used to uh, own something that looked a little bit like this. But open our eyes, and frankly, we don't need to come up with these daft theories about government conspiracies or the world ending. Sometimes, you know, the truth is far more interesting, as long as you're ready to actually spend a little time to understand it. Anyway, SLU members uh, will be continuing uh, to watch Comet Ison as it continues its journey into the uh, inner solar system and its sun grazing encounter in November. Um, and they're also looking, actually, at the moment, Ison isn't the only comet out there. There are some stunning comets to look at at the moment, and we've been doing it every single night. And if you're one of those skeptics out there who still believe there's something fishy about Comet Ison, then why don't you use the SLU telescopes yourself to obtain your own real-time, unedited, unedited images of it? Anyway, on that note, it's time for me to go. Now, we will have a bundle of live Comet ISON updates to show you, so keep your eyes open on the SLU homepage, but we have plenty of other shows for you to enjoy. I've got two shows on Friday where we're going to be looking at Comet Brewington and its apparent close encounter with the ice giant planet Neptune. And an hour after that show, we're going to be tracking the fourth largest main belt asteroid. And then on Sunday, 
the first in my series about comets and asteroids, where we're going to be looking at the origins of these fascinating objects. But that's all for now. This has been another astronomical live production from SLU. Uh, I'm Paul Cox, and uh, actually, I'm not going to go off to uh, have a look at the, uh, the telescopes because we're weathered out. So actually, I think I'll have an early night. It's uh, 20 to 7 here in the UK. So it's good night for me and everybody here at SLU. So join us back. Join us uh, on Friday. Good night, everybody.